Um, welcome everyone to another episode of the Espresso series. This is the last one I think we're going to do for the year. So um, it's our Christmas special uh, Espresso series and we've, we've got, a, got a great topic today. We've had a, had a lot of people, a lot of agents talking to us about digital marketing. You know, as everyone knows, we're a digital marketing business. That's what we specialize in. You know, we're, we, um, we're not here to sell people leads or any of that sort of garbage. We'll get to that as we go through. But but we're just going to do a special session on digital marketing and and talk about um, you know a new product that we've got that we've got that was in response to agents wanting us to to um, to help them generate more leads. So we've got a great guest today, uh, Brock Brock Jager, not Jagermeister, Brock Jagermeister um, from B and D Realty in Queensland. So wrapped to have you on board, Brock. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself and and how are you finding the market? Yeah, thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, we're just a, a small agency, uh, just a business partner and I and our, our wives and, a, and another good friend from high school um, operating up here in the north side. And um, yeah, things are busy. I think uh, I speak for everyone in Queensland, I think at the moment, saying that uh, it's the Wild West, uh, having a good time. And um, we're very fortunate and hopefully it keeps that way and I hope the same for the other states soon. So. I can tell you it's really interesting uh, you know, about the strength of the market before we get into this. We, we, we do a... Um, this is something that I haven't mentioned to you, Brock, but we do a thing called price expectation where um, last month we had a record month of over 20,000 reviews posted in the month. And, and we're now getting, last week we had almost 6,000 reviews posted. We, we'd, we'd never cracked 5,000 before and we now had six, almost 6,000. But um, the last question we ask is, is, you know, the last question we ask a vendor is, um, is the price you achieved above, below or in line with your expectations? Um, in November, that topped 51%. More than half the of people who sold said, hey, I sold for more than I thought I was going to get. And already in December, it's at 54%. So it's, it's so that growing. Nationwide? nationwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you able to break that down? How is it looking, say, state to state at the moment? Yeah, yeah, we can. We can break it down. I don't know it off the top of my head, but we absolutely, yeah, we absolutely can break it down. But every, every, the, I think the good thing is, is that every state, um, it, its price expectation is growing. Yeah. Uh, Victoria has probably grew by the most, and that was mainly because we suffered a longer lockdown. Um, yeah. So, but but Queensland growing, Sydney's growing. Uh, ACT is going off its head. It's a, it's a very strong market in the ACT at the yeah. moment. It's a, a really interesting state. Anyway, hey, enough of that. But um, I, I want to ask you first of all, Brock. You know, digital marketing. What you, you, you're right into digital marketing. Why why is it important to you? And and what what problem are you trying to solve with digital marketing? Yeah, sure. Um, digital marketing is really important to us because we don't do too much else in regards to marketing. We're actually hugely a referral based business. So. We, we rely, our bread and butter is you do a good job, people tell people and we grow that way. So obviously you can see why rate maintenance is pretty important, you know, to a business like us. And when you go out and the, the, at the end of the day, the product of your hard work is a client, you know, yeah, speaking well about you. Obviously it's good to have a stage or a platform to be able to get them all together and sort of show it off, um, so to speak. So when people are doing their research, uh, very important to me that, that people are able to find us. From one way or another so. yeah well we all know that i mean it sounds like a broken record but but most people's i mean i know i do me and my wife we've got four kids most nights um we lead very boring lives you're sitting up in your bed on your laptop and you i don't know you you just uh, you whether you're booking a holiday or whether you're looking at real estate or whether it, it's where everyone is is nowadays um but we had look a lot a lot of agents have come to us in, in recent times um talking about you know really consolidating their their market you know I, I use the words dominating their key market um you know and and stopping other you know stopping competitors you, you've got an interesting insight into this but stopping competitors you know entering their core market is, is that important to you how, how do you view that what's your key market there is i'm going to pronounce this right narangba um, sorry, You're on, man. Uh, on. Uh, us Victorians not really knowing all these know. Queensland around the country. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> that Narangba. Hey, you, know, yeah. you, you do. You're really strong in Narangba. How, how important is it that you, you essentially get called into every listing and, and dominate that market? Yeah, sure. Um, look, it's one of those things. You, you work really hard early, so we're, we're, we're a relatively young business, really. Like we're, we're three and a half years 
um, going now. And um, it's one of those things. You work really, really hard to build up that, that, um, that presence and that name to begin with. And then that, that in turn repays you down the track, right? So once you become sort of one of the top three in your area, people then naturally sort of gravitate towards you, which is really cool. Um, a lot of people know it's good, a good idea to get a couple of different opinions when you're selling, but people aren't going to go out there and get 10 agents out, right? Like you're lucky people will get three. The higher you can get up that ranking of, you know, one, two, and three, uh, the more the more it benefits you. You can't rest on your laurels. So you got to make sure you keep that up. But it's it certainly makes life a lot easier, put it that way, especially if you're shooting for a bit of a work-life balance, um, you know, like ourselves. So, yeah, it's just one of those things, hard work pays off. And then once you're up there, you want to you wanna hold on to it for sure. Yeah, no, it's a really good point. I guess it's sort of like, um, it's a bit like you're... Ooh. Got a mate calling me. Go away. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> I should have right. turned that off. How bad is that? Hey, um, so it's a bit like your bread and butter. You know, you, you know your core market is going to provide that that, that foundation of, of listings throughout the year and, and there's cream on top. But uh, you're right, going hard early and, and, and really consolidating in that market. Yeah. Um, Don't get me wrong. Like, it's always nice for me to see other agents come. We're all there once. Like, we're all new once and it's exciting too. It, it helps always keep you on your toes and you see someone up and coming and it's like, that's really cool. You know, you get, almost get excited for them. And I've naturally got a competitive nature anyway. So when you see it, it sort of <laughs> reignites that fire in your belly to, to do better again, you know? And, and I yeah. think it's really cool because, you know, not only does it make you a better agent for them too. So I actually got no issue with competition. What I do like though is getting in the door, right? Like yeah. um, if I have spare time, you know, personally, I'm probably a little bit different to most people here, but I don't like to sit there and cold call or prospect or, you know, go out of my way too much anymore these days. Like for me, if we've got spare time, I want to enjoy that. So by maintaining that top rankings, it sort of frees up a lot of that time you'd otherwise spend, you know, doing those sorts of things. And yeah, we could go and do all that and grow bigger again, but you sort of got to make that personal decision whether that's, is that worth it to me or not? You know, on yeah. a personal level. And once you hit a certain degree, it's not so much anymore. So. Yeah, and, and, and look, the reason for everyone watching, the reason I talk about that, it's not r relating to digital marketing, but I want to link these two things together because, well, you know, a, a lot of agents came to us talking about, you know, consolidating their key market and, and you know, not, I think you're, you're right, Brock, everyone does, no one minds competition, but you at least want to be in the game. You want to be called in and you don't want these leads to go to other people and, and not know about it. Uh, and that's something that you came to us and, and, and we had a lot of people talk to us about it. And we thought long and hard about it and, and, and we thought, where, where's the opportunity to really start directing those leads, making sure that, that, that you know, that Brock, you get in the door and, and people who, who are very strong in their markets get in the door. And I want to show everyone something here. It's, it's, a, it's a new, um, it's our Google AdWords product. Um, I hope everyone can see the screen here. I'm going to get rid of, rid of that and uh, get rid of the Q&A there as well. So what we've done is is we've, we've developed a product that um, we've developed a product to to um, you know if someone is looking for an agent in Narangba and they search that into Google, um, it 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 comes up straight away. Can everyone see this screen? Have I? Um, can you see that, bro? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So Narangba. So what I've just done here is I've typed in this, you know, someone would come to Google and say real estate, oh, I've spelled agents wrong in Narangbar. And, and here's this ad up the top here, you know, Narangbar top, top agencies, They're all best real estate agents in Narangbar. And here's this ad that's come up. You'll see the mobile numbers all the same here because it's all Brock's mobile number. Um, if I type in find real estate agents in Narangbar, again, the ad comes up the top here. And even if I've just typed in a term like who is the best real estate agent in Narangbar, you see that, that, um, that this ad comes up the top here. So what we're doing here is, is we're, um, and, and we're, we're getting better at this at Rate My Age. And I'm not going to suggest to everyone watching that we've perfected this. Um, but all of these ads then link straight into Brock's profile or into, into the agency profile. So it's basically getting those direct leads, people who are saying, I'm looking for the best person. Who, who are the best agents in Narangba? Uh, and capturing those leads. And, and um, as, as everyone knows, we're not a lead generation business. We certainly don't sell leads. I think um, when we look at some of the other ads that are sitting here, um, I'm, I'm not here to attack any of those other businesses. Everyone has their own business model. Um, but, but for us, it was about, um, I guess, you know, um, you are a top ranked agent in this suburb 
let's get that out there and let's let people know and get them directly to your profile um, and in the door. So that, that's a product that we just launched and, and one that, that I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, one that, um, Brock, you were one of the agents that, that, that came to us, um, I think, and, and we're talking about, about that sort of problem. Um, how has it worked for you? Yeah, uh, beautifully. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of your staff. Uh, we, we only got you on because it worked beautifully, but everyone else said, no, I'm not joking. But they, I think, Brock, you were the first one to test this product with us. So that, that's yeah. why we've got you on. What, what, what sort of happened was um, Trent from your team gave me a call. Um, brilliant gentleman, yeah, really nice fella. And um, and he's called me up with one of your, one of your products. And um, look, there's, there's certain things that I think, there's great tools out there and you've got to find which ones fit for your business, you know, well. And because of the, the unique nature of our of our business, um, the product you're coming with at the time wasn't exactly what the right fit for us is. But I, I did let him know about a problem I was having, which is something I refer to as scalpers, which is basically in our business, you, we tend to find our business generated from, you'd have a, uh, a local potential vendor, they go do their research, top three agents, normally they jump onto, you know, one of the big website portals, they might jump onto you guys um, and look at sort of the top three in the area and give you all the call in sort of thing. So when they, that, that translates into a search phrase like you just showed um, on the screen before, like best agents in Angbar or whatever it may be. And these scalpers have gotten very good at working out, well, hang on a minute, if we create an ad saying that we're comparing agents and the reason I call them scalpers is because the amount of comparing they do, I don't think is, uh, I won't say too much, but let's just say they're a lot better at, uh, at scalping sort of 20% of your con than they are actually sort of providing any sort of value to the client, in my opinion. Whereas I found Rate My Agent to be a far better product, not only obviously for us, but for the client as well. Like it's a, it's a, a fair playing field, right? Like every agent's got access to get on there. It's not just the ones who are paying that particular site. Every agent's got the ability to jump on there, uh, do a good job for clients, get those reviews, build a bit of a, you know, a choir singing your praises and rate my agents the platform to put them on and um, and fair game, you know. And the problem we had was that those particular websites or companies were getting very good at honing in on those things. So I'm, well, hang on a minute, this is money for jam, right? So when they're taking 20% off you, and I've noticed because they're getting better and better, that's something that was getting actually more and more prominent, like, the quarter prior to you guys helping us out and launching this off, there was about five from that quarter, which is copping about two and a half grand ago, which is pretty expensive, wow. right? Whereas a year ago, that might have only been one a quarter or something like that. So they're leads that we otherwise would have generated naturally, but they've now learned how they can sort of jump in on real quick, make some quick cash and then jump out. So um, they're getting quite uh, gutsy and I'd sort of had a gut full. And so when I had the opportunity and I was, I was speaking to Trent, I mentioned to him, look, this is what's going on. Um, I would actually love it if you guys could turn around and compete in that ad space. I could, you know, go and create my own little crappy compare agents website. I don't have the time and the resources. I'm take, if I take time away from doing what, I, what I'm good at, then, you know, I'm, I'm losing money on the other end, right? So yeah. why not the platform? It's already fair, it's already established. It's got a great reputation. Um, and I don't even care, to be honest, it's a, it's a bonus to me that it lands on the web page. I'd be happy if it just went to agents in the rain bar, for example, because again, if you're going to call in the top three, as long as I get in the door, the rest is up to me, right? Like, and I know that, you know, I can back myself and go, well, I get a 30% sort of appraisal list ratio. Therefore, it makes sense to me. Even if I'm paying to get leads that, you know, another agent might get the job, well, I know the majority of them, I'm going to win them and it's actually going to save me a lot of money. So um, what was really cool is Trent, Listen, he took it to the team and within a week, you guys had this up and running. So yeah, I just want to say thanks to you all. I really appreciate it. It's very cool. Well done, Trent, if you're watching. Bloody <laughs> superstar. Right? I mean, a bit, and, and look, that's the, the, without, you know, I mean, I know I founded the business, but those guys are really responsive. But, you know, most of the things we've built at Rate My Agent is due to conversations with people like you, Brock. You know, huge. you'll <laughs> tell us your problem and we'll go, oh, shit, that's a problem. Let's, let's see if we can fix it. I think being that agile is a huge benefit and we don't have a lot of friends in real estate, right? Like yeah, there's a lot of people trying to pick you apart along the way, but there's very few who will back you up and be a support there. And I think, I feel like that's genuinely what's happening, which is very cool. So 
Yeah, good on you. Mate, not everyone believes it. I still have fights with people telling me <laughs> I'm trying to steal their bloody commission and I'm going to back I'm going to turn on them and all that sort of garbage. But I appreciate that because it is <laughs> we 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 we're, we're bloody passionate about it. We yeah. are here to support you guys and it will always be the case. I, I I think that there's a really interesting stat that sort of backs up what you're saying here that 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 I often spout and it's a stat that comes from Google. Um and the stat says I can't remember exactly, um, but it's in the 80, you know, 80 to 85 percent. It says that even when a consumer knows what they're going to do, so they know the holiday resort they're going to, they know the restaurant they're going to, they know the real estate agent they're going to use. Yeah. 80 to 85 percent still go to Google and search for information about them, even when they know. And, and that's what you're sort of talking about. Look, again, I'm not here to talk about other people's business models. Oh, of course. But putting yourself there and protecting, you know, your, protecting your revenue is really important. And let's be really honest, like real estate as a, you know, as an industry doesn't have the greatest reputation, right? So surely that's going to be amplified more when people just want to make sure that, you know, other people are saying the same thing. So, which is totally fair, but what, where they don't realize they're, they're missing out is they might not actually necessarily have the best agents being compared to, and that's what they're being led to believe. And that's what I disagree with. I think that's, regardless of our business aside, and yeah, of course, I'm here to make money and sell houses and all that too, but I think it's quite unethical when you can say we compare agents and then, then they're, they're essentially not. Whereas if you get, okay, it's going to land on the profile, but then they can search for Angbar and see, they can see that from an unbiased perspective, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, awesome. I did, uh, a, a bit of a, a plug question for Rate My Agent, but I, I'm curious, you know, I, I do know this, sure. but how much is it costing you and, and, and is it working for you? Are you getting business from it? Yeah, I, I don't look at it like it's a cost, uh, Mark. I, I look at it like if, you know, if I gave you a dollar and you gave me five bucks, is that costing you money? No, nah, like, nah, that's just how it is to be quite honest. Like, I found that as soon as we launched what we were doing, those leads from those other places, pretty much came to a dead hole and you guys fill that gap. Yeah, it, it works. I was, I was stoked. I was actually, I did not expect it to do so well so early. Like it's one of those yeah. things that you always feel you're going to need to tweak and change words and all that kind of jazz, but your team now that I'm, I'm cheering. So um, yeah, it doesn't cost me a cent you know, really. Like, yeah, okay, I, I have an initial outlay, but I get that in fistful. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I think that's a really good point. And, and as you said, we're, we're it, to be honest, it surprised us a bit as well. <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and a really pleasant surprise. We we sort of launched it with you, and 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 went, wow, this is this is actually really good. And it was very cool. And we look, yeah, we launched it as a fully fledged product um, only a, a two or three weeks ago. Well, it was not long ago. I can't believe how and, fast you've got it through. You did well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we, we, it's just so everyone knows. I mean, it, it is we we only sell it. It's exclusive for a suburb, so we can only sell the suburb once when you search the suburb, and, and because we don't want we don't want people competing each other. But already we've sold out a hundred suburbs um, across, or it's approaching rapidly approaching a hundred suburbs, and we're like, shit, this is like awesome. I mean, it's great that it's uh, it's awesome to hear you say things like it actually doesn't cost me anything because you know because it works. Um, Look, that's right, mate. I think you owe me a coffee, but no, nah, it worked, worked well. My I do, I do. I'll probably owe you a few beers. I'm not sure about, uh, you know, yeah. uh, no, nah, sure I just appreciate you um, supporting us. Yeah, it's a real yeah. problem. I think that if it's something that if left unchecked was only going to get amplified, right? Like we've had some of those, some of those, uh, you know, companies come to us now and start to propose some really cheeky things like um, wanting to charge a large fee for every lead, regardless whether you got the listing or not. Like this, they're getting, they're getting uh, very confident, and, yeah. and sort of, I'm glad we've got an industry body to sort of jump in and and, and be able to tackle that issue with us. So it's very cool. Yeah, and I, yeah, I, I think I mean we as a business, you know, we're here to support agents, and but but we're also here to support consumers. And I think I mean just a, a personal opinion here. People don't have to agree with me, but I, I, I get worried about things that 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 also put upward pressure on, on the commission that a consumer has to pay. Because if, we, if we're all fighting for that bucket of commission, because the commission's finite, you know, yeah. and if everyone's fighting for that and people are trying to take chunks of that, it, it certainly doesn't put downward pressure on the consumer's cost. You know, it, it, it's only gonna put upward pressure on, on consumer's costs. Um, I, I suspect, I don't know if you've got thoughts about that or agree about that. But... Uh, look, I, I think that, that 
but every agent has a different um, thought about commission and what rates are and all that kind of stuff. All I can say is it's never a good feeling when it feels like you're paying someone without any, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It um, doesn't feel like you're getting value for money. And to a degree where it almost feels like it's a shady business because not only are you being ripped off, the client's being misled. It's sort of a lose-lose all around. And it's it's um, it's like, uh, you know, you hear about these these scalpers with uh, cinema tickets or a PlayStation 5, right? They'll go out and, and purchase them, resell them straight away. Hey, they make money, but is that a, an ethical business model? No, no, it's not. And, you know, how's it looked upon? So is anyone winning from it except for the company? And if the answer is no, then in my opinion, that's not cool. Yeah. I, th- I reckon that's a really good. I mean, my man taught me many years ago that business is about win win. You know, if yeah. you can have a win 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 and everyone walks away winning and everyone feels that, hey, that was really beneficial, if the consumer can walk away saying, you know what, that was really helpful. Yeah. I saw that ad and it really helped me make an informed decision. You provide as an value. agent. Yeah. yeah, provide value. You can walk away and say, hey, you know what, I paid some money, but but I got value for that money. And if rate management walks away, I think, it, unfortunately, for many businesses across the globe, they they forget that it's something that that is that is really prominent prominent for us. So I just want to show everyone one more example of things we're doing at um, uh, at Rate My Agent across the the broader sort of um, digital marketing space. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again. Get rid of that. Uh, get rid of the questions. So we have this. Um, we have this thing we call a cyber sale, but but it's really the cyber sale was the other week, but we're doing some, the guys at Rate Major have built this thing called AGAS, where they can produce all of this awesome sort of um, content that we can promote through, you know, ad networks, social media networks, Instagram, Google, Facebook, Twitter. Um, Josh Teslin has is, is started to use it. Um, you know, we can create all these just sold ads, these review ads, you know, um, find out what your property is worth. This thing called AGAS, it's, it's bloody interesting. That, again, I had nothing to do with building it. I, I, there's much smarter people, but it, it can generate something like 200,000 assets in, in two minutes or something. It, it just, it churns out all this amazing sort of content. Um, but at least to that question for you, Brock, you know, what, what's, um, you know, there's all this, well, right, mate, you can generate all this content, but, but what have you found are the best digital marketing channels for you? We've spoken about AdWords and what we've done. Yeah. Um, you know, what else, what else do you use and what else do you find, find beneficial? I, to be honest, I can't find any agents in the country who find Twitter beneficial, for example, we still yeah. link into it, but, but yeah, yeah, my, my answer is probably not a great one in the sense of, and this is what made it so easy to track where my leads are coming from, but we don't really do advertising. Like that's the yeah. only truth. We, we maybe do like a just list or just sold fire and hey, we might do like a little bit of Facebook posting, but it's really, we're really minimal. We're, we're, we're not going to win awards or anything for selling, you know, hundreds of properties a year, but at the end of the day, it's that lifestyle balance, right? So to be able to sell a lot of homes, have a good time, still, lead a good life and be able to take holidays and have weekends and and things like that that's what's important to me so it's about looking for, for me personally it's like well you look at your business you look at your strengths right so and go well you know we, we 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 have a market share in this area i know that if i get in the door of a property i've got every chance i'm going to win that job so it's just about getting into more doors for the middle most small amount of effort i guess and something yeah. that you can be consistent with and for me i like that that platform of going well Nothing speaks louder than a past client. You know, there's nothing more powerful, I think, than someone else talking about you guys. That's how we grew to where we are today. And to be able to have that, get them all together. And then when people are doing their research, they can do their own research independent. And typically, you know, that's going to lead back to us being a phone call in. So we're pretty simple. We just stick to that. And yeah, um, yeah. Sorry to say, mate, I don't do too much to job at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, that, that's good. I mean, and that and that's great. It, it, it's um. You know, it's horses for courses and, and everyone has to stick with what works for them. You know, obviously yeah. you've found that, that, that what we're doing for is working and, and, and that's enough. And I mean, having repeat business and referral business, that, that's the perfect business to have really is. Well, it's brilliant. If I wanted to, it's not going to get me to, you know, we, we might crack a hundred sales this year, but if I want to do sort of Josh's numbers or something like that, I need to step up and do those things. But you yeah. got to make that decision as an individual to go on where, where's the income you're happy with and then where's the lifestyle you're happy with too. And then you've got to work yeah, out yeah. your own balance and, and everyone's answer is going to be different to be honest with you. So it's just, 
as I said, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really personalized thing, I guess, you know, and oh. what I loved is that you didn't have a solution. I had a problem within a week is you put something together, which was amazing. The results were just stupid. Like it just shouldn't have happened. And um, how many, can I ask you straight up, how many listings have you, how many leads have you got and how many listings have you got? Yeah. So to be honest with the last two weeks, I haven't really been to keep much of a track of. I've got half the business on, on holidays and my wife's been uh, wasting. <laughs> but, um, but look, in the first month, I did keep on it quite heavy and I was, um, I was actually engaging people because I wanted to see how it was working. Um, I'd really gotten fed up with the scalpers. And uh, first month, we'd had five appraisals and of, of that, I turned into four listings. The fifth one hasn't come on with anyone yet. So we may still get it, but like, wow. And my numbers aren't always that way. You know, I'd be happy if I got three. It still makes sense. You know what I mean? If I got three out of the five, awesome. If I only got, to be quite honest, it made sense to me. If I only get one lead from you guys and, and list that a month, that's still well and truly saved me a heap of money. But to get where we got to, it's just, uh, I didn't think it would happen. So, I'll, yeah. Yeah, cool. Now, as I said, it was a pleasant surprise for us as well. I mean, you, you, and it's, it's, we have a philosophy in our business of failing fast. You put it out there, you give it a go. If it doesn't work, you move on. And and then if it does work, oh, awesome. We found something that we didn't know we had and and, and, it's, and it's working, you know. It's, I was a bit nervous because Trent kind of me goes, oh, they're going to give it a go, but they're only going to do a one-month trial. And then like two weeks in, I'd had, I think at that point in time, I'd had like three appraisals come from it. And Sometimes those leads will be like people have called you up and gone, I see you got a heap of referrals and you have to hone down what website they sort of found you from and that's how they will track it back. Because yeah. it's not always that they click the button or calls, particularly from there when they might mention certain things. So but um was able to find out, yeah, they come from there. And I was I was making sure I called Trent every time, like, hey, got another one, hey, got another <laughs> one. I think I think I was the boy the uh, calling him more when he was calling me, trying to sell that space, just going, yeah, yeah, keep this thing going. I don't want to stop. So yeah, and look from our from our point of view, it, look, it, it has it's almost just been a test, and and the next thing for us is to build out better landing pages so you know what's happening. You know, so it's uh, not up to you guys to to track this. We should be tracking it, but um, but I feel it's feel those next really fun if if any agency out there are listening and and knows you know particular keywords that people are searching to give you that feedback because at the end of the day we need to look at it like we're a team really right like. The, the more info we give you guys, uh, the more feedback we can give to make this better and better, better along the way, the quicker we can get rid of this problem that is the scalpers. But we sit there and passively let them grow bigger again. It's not, doesn't help anybody. No one, no one wins. Yeah. Other than yeah. that one little company. So yeah. I can't have a comment on that, but I'll, I'll, yeah, that, that's <laughs> just, I, I've got to stay, I've got to stay independent. That's my fault. Um, Hey, so if anyone does have any questions about it, we're a bit of a quiet group today, but if you've got any questions for us now, feel uh, sing out. If you'd like to lo learn more about AdWords and, and how it works, feel free to get in touch with us at support at ratemyagent.com.au um, and we can certainly talk to you about it. But the last thing I do just want to show uh, Brock is um, it, it does seem to be working. Um, I'm going to show an example. Of, oh, you're, you're doing an awesome job. It's nothing to do with us. This is all your work. Um, but I'm going to show a little plug for the awards and the awards leaderboard here. Um, so I think, I don't think you were the agent of the year in Narangbar last year, but it looks like um, you are leading in Narangbar as the agent of the year, you know, with 37 properties sold and 19 reviews. You can still get a few more reviews there, Brock. And you oh, can heaps. Just... Yeah, the last, last three weeks, I've really dropped the ball, just being honest. Like there's a heat there. Yeah. I've up on and, and, and play some catch up and I've got all the excuses under the sun that I just <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and and that's fine. But I, look, it's I love this leaderboard because it shows everyone where very clearly where they are throughout the year. Um, it looks like you're in the box seat to win to win the award for Narangbar, which is which is awesome. You get a few more reviews, and 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 you'll definitely win it. Um, and just so everyone knows, this awards leaderboard will disappear on Friday. Uh, we're we're not going to leave it there, leading up all the way to to um to to. Uh, January um, we're going to hide it for the last three weeks of the year um, just so when the awards come you know there, there's still an element of surprise there but um, yeah it, it's uh, it's looking pretty good for you guys so far got some work to do but we'll get there you'll get there hey I'm going to stop sharing there um, uh, yeah so Brock thank you so much for, for joining us that was awesome 30 minutes goes very quickly we like to wrap this up really quickly um, Emma's just sending me here. Um, oh, hang on, we do have a question for Brock. 
what what would be here a question brock what would be your advice for an agent who has never dipped their toe into digital advertising before wouldn't have a clue where to start uh, sure question. um good question i guess um for me it's just you need to sit back and analyze where your own strengths come from right like let's say you're a new agent for example you can nurture clients in ways that i never could well oh, I like, I can, but it just comes at that personal sacrifice. So it's, you know, if, if uh, say, for example, uh, my my reviews on average had a three sentence, let's just do it on sentences for a second, but, you know, a, a three sentence review, and let's call that a, you know, a six out of 10 review. You know, they give us a five out of five, but really you could have serviced that client even better and gone to that next level and, and they could be leaving your paragraphs, right? So there's some exciting um, agents out there at the moment that have not been in the industry long and they're getting like, you, you, you string a couple of reviews together and you can write a book, right? But um, I guess it's about finding if you've got those, um, what is it that, that you excel at? And you don't have to excel at everything. You don't have to be in the industry forever. You don't have to um, be uh, you know, around forever. Or if you have been, use that. Um, I guess just finding out what strength you have and then pairing up a digital strategy that works with that particular strength, right? Because the digital, the, the strength of the actual digital advertising is only ever as strong as the as the product you're putting out there. Like for for me, for example, if I didn't put the effort in and get these reviews, well, there's no good people coming to my page because if I'm putting on, you know, a really poor show, uh, yeah. that's what they're going to reflect and see um, at the end of the day. So you, you want to be showing off your strengths. Is it is it time on market? Is it that you um, you know, are able to Is get a market share or yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's it, it's a little bit difficult to pinpoint. I think it's more just um, it, be more than happy to have a chat with you if you reach out and just let us know a little bit about yourself, and we can you know, maybe have a bit of a think and bounce some ideas off each other for sure. Yeah, cool. And, and look, I think from, from right, my agent's point of view, my, my two bobs worth on that question is, is you know, it, it's also about content, you know, uh, um, uh, digital marketing is still marketing. And, you know, it was Rupert Murdoch, whether you love him or hate him, he said content is king, you know, so y yes, it's, yes, it, you know, um, it, it's being good, or it, it's, it's having something to, to sort of like you, the words you use, Brock was having your choir sing for you, ha having something to sing about. Um, but it's generating that content, you know, and, and um, again, I just want to plug for Rate My Agent, but it, it's one of the things that we pride ourselves on is, is generating content, you know, whether it's awards content or review content or, or, or you know, what uh, our social media manager content, all that sort of stuff. Most people fail, in my, in, in my experience, most people fail with digital marketing because they don't have content to promote through their digital marketing channels. Yeah, the way I sort of looked at it is like, you know, I can paint my own house, right? But, and it's going to look all right from the outset, but the closer you get, it's like, oh, geez, you know, he's, he, he rushed it a bit here. He did not experience where he didn't put the right undercoat or whatever. And so for me, you know, while this digital strategy has worked, I put it down to the fact that I approach guys who do it every day. They know what they're doing. I told them a problem and we're able to work out a solution for that particular thing. And it, that wasn't me. I just let them know what the issue was. And then you give it to the experts who deal with it every day and go, right, yeah, this is what's going to best pair up yet so i'd probably even better than speaking to me to be quite honest with you is talk to someone like trent the guys he'll listen you'll find out what it is that you know where you're at a little bit about your business and then you can tailor to what's actually going to perform based on that right because they've they've got all the stats they know what works based on where your business is at and everyone's business is going to be different whether you're an individual or you're, you're a group but talk to people who do it every day yeah you might outlay a little bit more initially but What's the point of outlaying money if you're getting zero return for it when you can outlay a little bit more and get and get the gains? So yeah, to me, it's awesome. a no-brainer. And it's a scary thought at first, investing back in your business, especially if things are a little bit slow or you're not turning over huge amounts. But you know, you've, you've got to invest a bit into yourself, I think, to, to see the rewards. So. Awesome. On that note, Brock, thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a have a I, I think you said you're working straight through. Yeah. I'm having a bloody break. I'm not going to be back until <laughs> I'm not going to be back until the next espresso series. We've got we've got the you know the, the wonderful Tom Panos coming back for the first one of the series of, of uh, on the 20th of Jan next year. 
Um, I'm going to have a bit of a, I'm not going to have that much time off, but I'm certainly going to have a few weeks off. But yeah, Brock, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Thanks for being here. Have a, have a great Christmas with the family and we look forward to catching up next year. Much appreciated. Thanks, Mark. To everyone, have a great Christmas. See ya. Bye-bye.